have you ever felt? And go. Right? Can you see my eyeball? That's creepy. All right. Um, this is a hook and this is a bead. And you can fish it just like this. No, just kidding. Um, we're going to tie a 20 incher. It's a classic fly that's been around for billions of years, maybe trillions. And it uses pretty much, uh, well, all natural materials except for the wire and the bead. Um, and one of the reasons why I started tying this is because I have a real good buddy uh, named Chad Doyle that shot a turkey and gave me some really cool turkey. And then uh, the neighbor kid shot a squirrel and he skinned it for me. His name's Mason. So shout out to Mason and Chad. And uh, we're going to tie a fly with the, their stuff. Okay, so this is a curved shank hook. I really like this Daiichi 1260 better than a 200R. I like the hook gap just a little bit better on this one. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, this is a size 10. I got a 3.8 millimeter bead. You could probably do with a 3.3 as well, just depending on how heavy you want them. So on this one, I'm going to start with some O2O 2 wire, um, 13 or so wraps. It's got to be an odd number though. So if you just wiggle that off and smooth it out with your fingernail, just shove that up behind the bead. And more than anything, that just kind of keeps the bead in place while you tie this fly. Thread's going to just be a Uni ADOT Camel. And I'm going to wrap down the bend a little bit about right there so that when I hang the, the thread it's gonna be right where I mash the barb uh, yes we have gotten a little bit of hate for not mashing barbs in videos so we did it haters feel loved right now okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, just make a little bit of a bump here because I'm gonna put a split biot tail so pretty small bump but just something for the biots to kick off of and then I like to take the hook and put it in the vise about like this. This curve uh, in the hook shape kind of makes it uh, a little bit more difficult to get in behind the hook. Um, the tails are going to be just goose biots in brown. Okay, so I've lined the uh, biots up. As you can see, I've been tying the purple smurf killer fly and I use special smurf blood so my fingers are a little bit purple anyway so the the biots are back to back so they split away from each other and i'm just going to stick those in there and i'm going to tie those in just kind of gauge how long you want them you don't want them super long but i'm not a mathematician so i'm not going to say you know seven eighths the length of the body or any of that crap just tie them in so they look good so i'm going to place them pinch them with one finger and I play, I do a, a loose wrap and then just kind of pull it. So my tails end up looking like that. That's just with one wrap of thread. I check them out just to make sure they're all right. And I can see that one of them's maybe a little shorter than the other. So I'm just going to do that again. Channeling my inner Davy McPhail. So I've got the, the biots placed and I'm going to wrap those biots up to where the lead wire starts and trim them off. At this point I'll put the hook back in where it's supposed to be. And we're going to add a, a wire rib to this. I've seen 20 inches tied with a bunch of different types of rib. Um, anything from wire to tinsel to um, floss, stuff like that, but we're choosing wire. You can use any size wire for this. Um, I chose the brassy size just because it, it'll show up a little bit more. <clears throat> then I'll tie that in right behind where the lead stops wrap it back and then forward okay so 
this is where the the 20 incher really can start to look good or it, it can struggle the first thing is um find peacock eyes buy the whole eye so you can buy sticks with eyes as you can see these filaments on this peacock are really nice and thick and up here near the eye they taper from thick to thin and that you're going to want to take advantage of that taper on this fly because you want the back to be thinner and taper it up to be thicker so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this one and i've, I've selected this one out of the package and i'm going to take three of those you might want to grab four of them for a size eight or six but three seems to do well for a size 10. and i'm going to line them up by the tips as best i can and then i'll just trim those tips off about like that and i'll take those tips and i will tie those in right here behind the lead again keeping everything nice and on my side of the hook and wrap all the way back down to the tail and now instead of just leaving it as is i'm going to form an underbody now you've seen underbodies formed for copper johns um, we've done that before but the underbody in a copper john is what makes it or breaks it. Same thing with a 20 incher, but we're just wrapping peacock over it instead of wire. Now the good thing about this is it doesn't need to be super thin, but you just need to have the general taper. So what I'm gonna do is um, just taper that up, you know, covering that gap between the body and where the lead is. The other thing I'll mention is you can do this in different colors. So we also sell peacock eyes in purple, in red, in yellow, all those different colors. In fact, here is a fly, a purple 20 inch stone that I tied. I even colored the turkey with a purple marker before I, I cured it with soft head. And so you've got purple peacock that actually has purple wire. So kind of a cool bug. You could probably do this with purple dubbing as well. All right, so once we're here, we're just going to take those. I don't twist them up or anything. And I'm just going to wrap those forward. And you can see that that taper in that peacock really creates a nice natural buggy taper. And if it's if it's too buggy, you can actually go in and trim it a little bit so you can see I wrap that all the way almost up to the bead and uh, I'll wrap dubbing over that and, and tie in a thorax okay so now this is critical um, you need to wrap the wire the opposite way if you wrap the wire the same way as the peacock as soon as a fish eats that fly and it hits that peacock it's gonna break one of those peacock fibers and it's gonna unravel so if you wrap the wire the opposite way, that's going to trap down those peacock fibers with every wrap. So we wrap that all the way to the front. Now, a lot of you are thinking this as well. This is basically a Prince Nymph right now without the hackle and the legs. So or the wings so you could do that as well so a lot of uh, good techniques here that you can apply to other flies I'll just helicopter that off and now if I really wanted to I could take my scissors and trim this peacock to shape to, to make a taper but I had really good peacock I don't need to do that I actually did do that with this purple peacock body and Curtis will take a picture with his nerdy freaking camera and he will show you uh, what this one looks like close up. Okay, so now to tie in the thorax, I'm going to wrap my thread back and let it hang almost at the halfway point, maybe a little bit closer to the bead right here. And now you can change this up for, for thin skin or whatever you want, but a natural turkey thorax is really good looking. So here's some of the turkey that old Chad shot. If, if uh, Chad didn't shoot your turkey, it's probably not going to work. But um, this is this is turkey. As you can see, it's coated. So what I did is I took some Loon Soft Head. 
and I coated this all up. I just painted a little bit on there, the whole feather, and I set it aside for about 20 minutes and it cures up. So now, as you can see, I've cut out sections of it and you can cut it just like thin skin. So it'll stay together really well. It's super durable. So I'll just take a slip of that. So this is my turkey. You can see it's kind of uneven. Um, not a big deal. I'm going to take the part that I, I cut and I'm just I'm just going to lay this on top of the 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 fly and tie that in. So as you can see, I can test it. My my thorax is going to be just about like that. Um, I'm actually going to wrap it back a little bit further. I want it to be a little bit bigger. And there we go. Thorax is, is ready to go. You can see that's really flexible even though it has glue on it. Okay, from here I'm going to prepare a partridge feather. So here's a, a partridge. It's kind of a, a full piece of partridge. And we're going to use that to make legs on this fly. And I'll create a tie-in point by folding those fibers down so I have a little notch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that, turn the feather upside down, so shiny side is facing down, and I'm going to tie that notch in directly on top of the thorax. Just about like that. That way, if I pull this over now, it's going to create legs on the fly. And if I really wanted to get techy, I could pull off the additional fiber so that it would just lay down the, the perfect number of legs, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to wrap that in there and trim off the tips. Alright, so time to add a thorax. This is where I pull out the, the squirrel that old Mason shot me. And you can see it's it's got a really cool reddish grayish color. I really like the fox squirrel color. Um, and the one that he got me had a really, really light underbelly. So I, I like this one. Uh, we sell the, the Wopsy stuff and they do have all the different types of squirrel, fox squirrel, gray squirrel. They've got squirrel belly. Um, so play with the colors on this. It works really well. So I'm just going to dub up the thorax. So I got a pretty long dubbing noodle because I want this to be pretty beefy. Um, you can also use uh, hare's ear for this, snowshoe, rabbit foot dubbing, a different other, a lot of other dubbings will will be sufficient. But I, I'm really on the squirrel right now. So you can see that's that's pretty buggy as I wrap it, and I'm just gonna wrap that up to about the bead, and then take that off. Squirrel's real easy to remove. And then I'm going to take this partridge feather and just pull it. Make sure I'm not trapping fibers, but just pull that over the top of the thorax and tie this off. So you can see that the stem's kind of wanting to kick over. I'm just going to grab that and pull it straight. So you can see I've got nice looking stonefly legs on either side. And don't worry about durability because the, the, the wing case is going to go right over the top of that feather and protect it all. So once that's in place, I'm going to put my pull my wing case over and kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit. I'm just going to take that and really fine tip scissors are a must. These are the... Uh, TMCO razor scissors. They have a bunch of different varieties. Looks like Curtis dropped them. Look at those tips. That's just noob. I'm not using these anymore. Can't have me come over to your house and use tweaked scissors. All right, these are much better. So I'm just going to get in real tight and trim that off. And from here, I'm just going to clean those 
butts up and tuck them in underneath the, the bead and build up a little bit of a head. Just a real basic whip finish. Now that's that's pretty much the fly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it even more buggy. I'm going to take this little Tiemco dubbing brush, and this is really cool because you can just get in right where you want to pick the dubbing out. I'm going to turn it upside down and pull that squirrel to, to either side of, of the thorax. And that will kind of blend in with those partridge legs. So we've got a really picked out thorax now, and it blends in well with those legs. Um, now if you got this wet, all of that dubbing would just kind of go right back into a big old ball. So what I do is I'll take this Loon water-based head cement, turn it upside down, and I'll just dab it right on the belly of this fly. And that will keep those fibers from coming back down in the middle and keep them nice and out to the side. So kind of a, a wide, flat profile like you want with a stonefly. And then you can take this, a little bit more of this, and put it on the head. You could use UV resin if you wanted. Um, and that will shine right up. Anyway, that's the 20 inch stone. Anyway, the way I tie it. Give them a tie in a whole bunch of different colors. And, uh, I, I, you know, one other thing is, if you check now, if you like Euro style, this is a great anchor fly. You can make this super, super heavy. Anyway, my name's Cheech. I approve of this fly. And that's it.